Well, here we are, Sunday afternoon, and the CB antenna is already up and mounted. I was going to try to videotape the whole thing, but I had some issues. Actually, the straps for the chimney mount were actually pretty easy to do. What I did is I started the first band in uh, the bracket and uh, taped it to the uh, chimney every, every couple of feet all the way around with some uh, blue painters tape and then worked my way back around to this side and uh, pulled the strap up tight and then you bend it over and bend it back and then there's a special clip they give you to bend to hold it and then, as you can see, there's really long, like, eye bolts right there. And I just put an open-end ratchet on there and tighten them up. Put them about 18 inches apart. So when I went to put the coax down the chimney, I thought it would be real easy. I started shoving it down, and it wouldn't go, it wouldn't go. And I put my hand in there, and I thought it was full of fiberglass because we don't use the chimney anymore. Well, I pulled out a wad, and it turned out to be a bird's nest instead. I still couldn't get it out down there. I finally pulled the cap thing off the top. And when I did that, I found out the chimney was stuffed with bird nest material. Three or four feet down into the chimney, it was a real pain. I took a piece of metal wire and made a hook on it and pulled out what I could. Finally, I ended up using my old chimney cleaning brush and dropping it down through the chimney. And I got black and filthy from head to foot because it all came out. There's some more of the nest. So, it was miserable. But as you can see, the tip of the antenna is probably close to 40 feet in the air. We've got like 10 here, and there's like another, mm, yeah, I would say 18 feet. And then we got, the antenna itself is about 19 feet. And I ran the coax right back down the chimney here. So, we'll go inside and we'll test it and see how it actually looks. I tested it earlier, I'll admit, and the SWR was a little high, but I thought maybe because it was on the ground down here, I'm just sitting upright on a stake. There's not really much else I can do to it. It is what it is. The SWR looked to be about 2, and that's, that's only a 2% reflection. So, I mean, it's fine. I'm not losing that much power that it makes any difference. The top connector's got a little crookedness to it, but that isn't going to make one iota a difference on how well this thing performs. All right, let's go inside and see how she works. So it got really ugly uh, dragging the, the chimney brush and the remains of the bird's nest and everything down here through my what's left of my stainless steel chimney, which we don't use anymore, so that's why it's a good place to you can see the coax coming out. I didn't buy long enough coax. I'm going to have to get an extension so I can take it out to my computer desk. But, let's have a look at what we got right here. Let's just zoom in a little bit. We'll give this guy a test. Let's see. We'll start with the volume down first. Hold it up. I'm getting some skip on here. Already I can see. Channel 6 is like one of the channels with a lot of skip on it. But let's change it to a channel not so much skip. We'll squelch it out. And we'll check the SWR on here first. So we hit SWR calibrate. You adjust the needle to the center, turn it back off, and I watch the needle here. Oh wow! Bill was right, my SWR is way down. That's good. And it's down up here too, that's awesome. Let's set it up here. You put it on forward. You key the mic. You set it. 
put it on reflected. Yeah, yeah, see we're down below 1.5 now. So that's perfect. See that antenna's working good up in the air. My buddy was right. So 1.5 is perfect. It's, you know, a half a percent of reflected power. That's nothing. Okay, let's see what we got for watts now. I'm showing just about five, four watts on that power meter. Uh, I, I don't know how I read the watts on this one. AM watts. Hmm. Now the modulation calibration on this AM radio, you go to set, we are on AM channel 40, we key the mic, we set modulation all the way to the end I guess, and then we turn it to modulate, and now you can see the mic bomb, bomb, bomb going almost to 100%. So our uh, Modulation looks really good on this radio. Uh, watt meter, yeah, she's, she's she's going right up there. Hundred watts, yeah, it still shows four, three and a half to four. That's what I expected. Okay. So we're looking good here. Let's go to channel 1. SWR is about 1.7 on that channel. Check, 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 check. Modulation's way up here. You can see boom, boom, boom. Modulation cal. Put that on set. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. Uh, we're going right up to about 100%. That's perfect. It means the radio is modulating the AM envelope as much as it possibly can. If anybody's interested, I can show you that envelope on an oscilloscope. What you will see is when you key the mic with no sound, you will just see a flat waveform. Now, this radio puts out about 20 volts peak to peak into a uh, 50 ohm load, which is 4 watts. 5 into 50, or 5 into 20, and uh, there's 4 times uh, into 50 ohms. 50 ohms into 20 volts, I mean, is 4 watts, 4 times. So, that's exactly right. Um, I can show you that waveform. What it does, what 100% modulation means is it goes all the way to the top, and when you go down to zero, the waveform looks like a bunch of footballs, and they come right together in the middle and they don't distort, they don't look like bricks, they don't look like keystones, you just get a nice double out of phase sinusoidal waveform like this. Again, if anybody's interested to in seeing that, let me know, but if you really want to see somebody who does a lot with CB radios, go to a guy called Mike's Radio Repair Channel, and he has much more detail on, on what the modulation and stuff should look at. Anyway, this radio and antenna looks like it's working just fine. So let's see if we can find somebody talking here. Channel 1 with squelches off. 40. Now this time of night they start talking to Skip, which means these guys with the overpowered radio start talking on channel 6. Here's the trucker channel, channel 19, pretty much dead these days. SWR is one and a half, perfect. I don't know if you can get much better than that than a homebrew antenna like I got. There's a little something in there. I can almost hear people talking. Oh. Eh, Mississippi. I'm in western New York. This time of night when the ionosphere gets charged up when the sun sets, they can bounce the uh, 
the waveforms off the ionosphere. And that's how they talk skip. Channel 6, that's usually real busy. There's a guy in Louisiana. That's over a thousand miles away. I turned the high filter on. Little David, huh? Another channel that gets real busy is 38 lower sideband. But because my antenna is verti vertically oriented, it doesn't receive sideband as well. Break, break, break. Can I get a comeback? Alrighty, well that's all you guys need to see. I'm just going to play with a couple of these radios. This one is in nearly perfect working order. I'm going to go through it and change all the capacitors that with age they start to turn slightly resistive and some of them short right out. So I'm going to do that. This will probably be my main radio to work with. Look at it, it's in perfect shape. It looks like brand new. It's 40, 50 years old. Um, and I have another identical one that doesn't work as well, and that's probably the capacitors. I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to check the voltage on the power supplies and uh, make sure that's correct also. And uh, I'm just going to have some fun with it. I've got another sideband radio, uh, a, a Radio Shack 451 that's a sideband mobile I'm going to put in uh, my van once I get that fixed too. That needs some repair. It works marginally. All right, guys. Well, that's it for the, the CB radio antenna. It seems to work pretty well, though. I'm not getting a lot of, uh, a lot of talking tonight. Not yet. We'll go through one more time here. We're on AM again, regular CB channels. So with a 40 channel upper and lower sideband, you get actually 120 channels. Sounds like some rednecks out there, don't it? Hey, they're just having some fun. They're talking illegal power, too. All right. Take care. God bless you guys. See you next time. I'm going to finish that sausage uh, stuffing tonight, too. Whoa.